And take it away. <laughs> okay. Well, first of all, I think it would be great if everybody did an introduction. Could we do that really quick and see where everybody's from? That would be nice. And I'm not sure how many people we have on the call. Um, seeing as this is my gig, I'll, I'll have, talk about me later. But let's see who's in the room. Who's in the room? Um, Debbie, I'd love to kick it off if I could. Uh, my name's Paul Sanders. I'm with the Greater Phoenix uh, Chamber Foundation, and we're part of the uh, hosts for these externships. And we are really grateful that you and Oliver are, are going to join us today and talk a little bit about uh, your organization, which is Generation Tech Support. Um, right. Just so everybody knows, and, and Debbie's doing the intro, she's the CEO, and uh, Oliver Carter, who's going to be joining us as the uh, Chief Information Officer. And you know, they're going to kind of share a brief synopsis here. Um, of the unique structure of their company. And they're also gonna kind of discuss uh, some details about internships and externships and how that can be uh, a tool for students. So I just wanted to kind of make sure everybody was, uh, knew who you were, Debbie, uh, as okay. we were getting started here and uh, how thrilled we are to be partnering um, with uh, the Chamber Foundation as well as our folks with uh, Melanie's organization there um, awesome. on the Center for the Future of Arizona. Yeah, I see a few friendly faces here, so I'm excited to talk to you all. Thank you very That's much. Great. Thanks so oh, much, Paul. You are welcome. And then um, I guess we can try to go down the, Melanie, would you want to suggest us to go down the line here of, of who shows up maybe just to call Everybody's on Everybody's line is a little different, but. Uh, yeah, how about if we do this, Paula, is, uh, maybe we'll start with Aaron. Aaron, you were the first to show up today, so we'll start with you and then you tag someone next to introduce themselves. <laughs> I like that. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> Everyone. I'm uh, Aaron Quigley. I uh, teach sports medicine and rehabilitation at Amphitheater High School uh, down here in uh, Tucson. Mm -hmm. And who's next on my list? It looks like uh, Barbara M. Hi, everyone. I'm glad to meet everyone. I'm Barb McDonald. I teach at Sunnyside High School. And I'm always open to learning something new. So you can teach an older, not an old, an older dog new tricks. I promise you, you're going to learn something new today. Oh, I'm, I'm in for it. Okay, let's see. How about Lauren? Mm -hmm. Hi, everyone. My name is Lauren Wisman, and I am the business partnership coordinator with Elevate Ed AZ. I'm the one who has kind of helped put this externship series together, working um, on the employer side mostly. So I'm excited to see how these go. I am going to pass it off um, to Andrew to do an introduction. Hi everyone, I'm Andrew Bevington. I'm the Director of Business and Education Partnerships for the Pima County Superintendent of Schools Office. And I'm really excited to be here. This is my first uh, educator externship experience and I was part of the planning team. So uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens. And I will, I will pass to Kathleen Barton. Thank you. Uh, I'm Kathleen Barton. I'm a consultant. I have the pleasure of working uh, with my colleagues at the Center for the Future of Arizona and also with Elevate Ed and the Greater uh, Phoenix Chamber Foundation for these externships. And I'm excited about this series. And I'm going to go to uh, Cynthia Reyes. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Cynthia, and I'm currently the Interim Director of Allied Health and Healthcare Programs here at Arizona Western College. I've been a nurse for seven years. I graduated from this college, came back and taught for two years. So I'm excited to uh, bring forth new information for the upcoming healthcare programs and the current ones we have as well. Awesome. Um, I will select Fernando. Thank you, Cynthia. Yes, uh, my name is Fernando Ramirez. Uh, I'm a CTE engineering teacher in San Luis High School uh, for about four years. And um, I work in the industry for about 17 years and primary in both corporation for 10 years. And I'm gonna go Kara. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kara. I teach eighth grade English and social studies at Glendale Landmark. Um, it's a K-8 school uh, and we do career exploration on Wednesdays. So um, this is a great opportunity for me to learn something new from my, for the career camps that we have. 
Um, I don't know who has gone through. I came in a little after, so I don't know who else to call on. Maybe Gwen or Kyra. Sally. Uh, Hi, Sally. Oh, yes, wow. I'm here. I'm sorry. I I had an appointment, so I was a few minutes late. So I just got okay. here. <laughs> I don't know what we're doing, so I don't know. Uh, just introducing ourselves. Oh, okay. <laughs> who's who's in the room? <laughs> okay, I'm Sally Miller. I'm the Reach. Uh, gifted services coordinator at Amphi High School, and I also coordinate our honors internship classes for juniors and seniors. Okay, great. And then okay, Anna, someone else. Yeah, Anna, have you introduced yourself? Do you want to introduce yourself and then tag tag someone else we haven't heard from if you, if you can. Hi, my name is Anna Crow. I am a school counselor in TUSD at um, a high school. And that's all. I will tag Kyra. Hi, my name is Kyra. I am the sports medicine and rehabilitation uh, service instructor at San Luis High School in San Luis, Arizona. Cool. San Luis. Oh. And okay. Denise, have you introduced yourself? Oops, you're on mute. <laughs> yep, I have not, but I will. I'm Denise Riley. I'm one of two career counselors at Pima Community College, and I tagged Teresiano. Yeah, I'm the other career counselor at Pima Community College. Uh, and I can tell the world of work is changing, and so I'm happy for this externship to maybe get a little bit of insight into how that's changing and how we might be able to better help students find work. Um, who else, Lupita? Lupita, are you with us? She went to get I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> Hi, I'm, I'm actually on my phone because I had to go get my son, but I'm, I'm listening and I'm paying attention. Okay. Uh, I'm Lupita okay. Cabrera and I'm the College and Career Counselor at Choya High School in Tucson. Okay. For TUSP. Okay, awesome. Thank and I don't you. know if there's anyone left. <laughs> right. uh, Gwyneth Turner, Patty, and Christina. Let's go with Patty. Okay. Hi, all. I'm uh, Patty Mapp, and I work for TUSD. I'm at Pueblo High School, and I think I've covered everything. Um, I'm not sure if Christina have have you introduced yourself yet? Go for it, Christina. Hi, I'm Christina Eichelkraut, and I'm actually the communications director for Generation Tech Support, so I work with Debbie and Oliver. So she's going to keep tabs on all you guys while I chit chat a little bit. She's wonderful, and she's going to reach out as well. Is there anyone that hasn't shared? Um, I think I'll go ahead and go. Okay. okay. Oh, Tracy. Okay. Go ahead, uh, Gwinnett. Okay, and then then Tracy, I'll I'll, I'll swing it to you. Uh, I'm Ed Turner. Uh, I am the sports medicine and rehabilitation services uh, instructor for Metro Tech High School in Phoenix, Arizona. Okay, I'm Tracy Lee. Uh, I teach business operations at Catalina High School here in Tucson. Okay, lots of cool Tucson people here with us today. That's very awesome. Well, thank you. Is everyone? We're all here. We're all here. Very good. So, Melanie? Okay, good. All right, good, good, good. And uh, Christina, if you'd keep tabs on everybody, that would be awesome. So thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today. Um, I think that we have all been on lots of meetings talking about what kids need today in the world of technology and STEM and perhaps even reaching out to sports. I know a lot of sports uh, programs are involving STEM. And I'm certainly going to address that a little bit. Uh, real quick, I was a technology teacher for 20 years at Shadow Mountain High School in the PD School District. And um, because of my students, I really want to give them all the props on this, not to be humble or anything, but uh, truly, um, when you give kids autonomy, and I think a lot of you teachers might agree, uh, when you get the more autonomy you give them, the more amazing your program will be. And case in point, that's, I'm a prime example of that. Um, I had rock star students that were tech students and they would say things to me dozens and dozens of times, Miss Kay, can we do this? And I go, hmm, 
uh, okay, and we'd find some money and we'd do it. And then they'd ramp it up a little bit and look, we do this, could we do this? So we did a lot of amazing things in my career as a teacher because I in fact had amazing students and I gave them a lot of autonomy in my classroom. So uh, that's a little bit of, I'm gonna share my screen with you a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna try to anyway, here, I want this window. Um, let's see if I can do this right. I always end up showing everybody my messy desktop. We don't want that kind of trouble. So am I sharing everything or am I sharing my website? Sharing everything. Yep. Well, hi, guys. Okay, I'll move you guys over. How's that? Move everybody over and do it this way. Okay. Uh, okay, we'll try it like this. How's that? Okay, put you guys in the bottom. Then you could see yourself. Okay, so um, here's our, our company, Gentech. So what we did as a program was we... Um, uh, uh, I, I taught a Gen Yes program. Is anyone familiar with Gen Yes, the international company started by Dennis Harper about 30 years ago? Anyone? Can they just shout out? Yes, no? Okay. Well, it was very popular about 20 or 30 years ago. And the idea was that kids were tech ambassadors. And um, by being a tech ambassador uh, meant that they would show teachers all about technology on their campuses. And um, so we did that. I, we embraced that full heartedly. Um, we were tech ambassadors on our campus and the tech students went out and they talked in conferences about what we were doing in our program. We built solar cars. We were, we were on the cutting edge of technology all the time. We would watch something and from MIT and we'd engage with them and the kids would say, let's do that. So we built boards and we started uh, competing internet um, nationally and statewide. And we had people from all over the world coming to see our program at the end of the day. So uh, we got a lot of attention from Cisco. Uh, we did some programs with them and HP and a couple of other big players and uh, our kids had this idea that since we're always, we're ambassadors to teachers on the campus, why can't we start a business and show the rest of the world about technology? Because Lord knows grandma needs it and Aunt Becky's always asking me about her phone and you know, surely there's something here. And I started to realize that there was something there. This, the, this group of very bright kids had a marketable skill set. So we actually, um, that's what this picture was down here. We actually competed in entrepreneurship nationally and we won nationally on the idea of kids starting a business, high school kids starting a business to provide tech support to the community. So Cisco, Cisco gave us a grant for this and this wobbly teacher and 22 high school kids started a company, a storefront company uh, in August of 2016. No business background, <laughs> a bunch of kids and me in a $4,000 um, space that you know we were hoping to cohabitate with some other people that didn't pan out so um, in any case uh, we learned business 101 drastically in our first couple of years and uh, we failed but we didn't close we re we reinvented ourselves we, we got behind in things and we, we got into a hole and we dug ourselves out and I would tell parents oh my gosh you know I've gotten your kids into this thing I don't know what to tell them and I had all the parents saying to me, you tell them the truth and you tell them that this is how business is struggle and how you're going to figure out how to get at it. So we did. We started addressing um, schools and started mentoring in some uh, coding and robotics projects in our store. And then we reached out to schools. We changed our location. We reduced our overhead and um, increased our um, revenue stream. Uh, that's coming from a teacher that knew nothing about business and we started flourishing. We are now in 90 schools. We're looking at probably 25 to 30 schools over the summer and then doubling that possibly in the fall. Uh, and what we're doing in schools right now is we're teaching real world technology. I say, I wanna say that again, real world technology because dozens and dozens of schools say things like, oh, we're teaching STEM, you know, we're part of the code day and we're on code.org and we are, um, yeah, we have a, a, a technology teacher and uh, yeah, they're doing some coding and um, yeah, the, yeah we, we've got this, we're all over the STEM thing. 
And then, you know, I, I might probe a little further and say, well, gosh, you know, is it Python? Is it JavaScript? Is it C plus? Is it, you know, Ruby? Is it the coding that industries are using today? And the response is generally something like, um, what? And, and that, that to me is the crux of what my mission is, okay? Our mission at our company is to teach kids of tomorrow the technologies that they need. The, the kids that are, are in our classrooms today need to know some technologies of tomorrow. So um, on our school site, I need to do a little bit more on the school site, but this is what we're, what we're promoting this summer, okay? So we are teaching cool coding, which is Python and JavaScript and um, HTML, as well as um, we've got some SQL and C in there. Radical robots, we've got about six different kinds of rab robots, which is like a nice form of cause and effect for kids. Uh, they can I'll actually go to the page. They can actually crash them around and build and, and, and see what these robots do. Uh, this is a, a seven-year-old kid with actual Python script behind him. He's pretty proud of himself. And then this is a, a young boy that's working with uh, the Minecraft environment. Um, here is Mighty Microcomputers. This is teaching to the Internet of Things. Uh, a lot of people don't know what that is, but it's, it's coming and it's, it's here. Uh, Cyber Defenders, we're actually teaching a cybersecurity course to kids from five to 15, age five to 15, talking about ethical hacking, as well as networking. We have eight-year-old kids in programs right now drawing their home network, and it's possible. Uh, quantum computing. Okay, this is where I'm going to introduce, uh, Oliver had a, a conflict with his kids today, and I think he needed to pick them up, so he might join us a little bit later once he grabs them. But uh, my partner is a aerospace engineer, so he is involved in a lot of the technical aspects of our company as well as developing our curriculum. So uh, we've got some gaming that's going on that's uh, supervised and that sort of thing. So, so here is what we are about. We are, are teaching, we are teaching um, the real world, you know, any personal tech question that they come into our store, we're teaching computer and device repair. We do do home service. We did a lot of this during the pandemic. Um, and we're teaching kids tech in our store, kids tech in schools, and then we're doing some upscale, um, like special projects with people that come in with uh, certain needs and that sort of thing that, um, or group, group tech sessions. So uh, lots and lots of opportunity. We like to think of ourselves as a tech hub, playing on the name Gen Tech. We're a all generations tech company uh, with geniuses. We like to call our guys geniuses. They're very, very bright and gals and with genuine service. So the whole idea of our company, and it is completely and wholeheartedly community driven. All of the techs and interns and externs now that we're involving in the company, we have, we have 25 young men and women working that all started as interns. Um, externship is a, a little bit newer of a concept that starting to float out there, which I'll speak to in a moment. Um, but everybody that works in our company, um, I think I'm, I know I'm the oldest person in the company for sure. Um, everybody is actively participating in how the company is run. So for the employers of our group here, um, or like Pima, who's in the room and our business, Andrew, our business development director, what we have to offer for your communities is is young men and women to come to our store and learn the technical arena that they want to flourish in, okay? So for example, we've had a couple of coding people that have come to our store and then they go and hang around the, the, the computer um, repair department and they start to learn about, oh, so this is how you put an SSD in or this is how you um, look at viruses. You know, I've just been coding. And then we have some maintenance people that come in and start to pick up on, on coding. So it becomes a very collaborative environment in our company. And at any point in time that you're there, you're going to hear people talk about, oh yeah, I had this Mac come in, it was showing, it was throwing these um, troubleshooting uh, tags. And so I looked this up and someone else will say, oh, well, have you tried this? You know, and, and there's tons and tons of amazing knowledge that, that just transfers 
kind of, um, I want to say, um, what's the word? Um, um, automatically, you know, just kind of they breathe it in sort of thing. So we have worked with Chiquinos for La Casa and Arizona youth groups um, and done quite a few externships with them where they're state paid. We also have all of our interns that come to our store um, that are interested, especially college students that want to learn a little bit more about coding or they have some knowledge about coding and robotics and then they will teach it in our schools. And so we have a lot of opportunities from a lot of different areas um, to work with many of you um, that I, I've heard introduce yourselves. So that was a lot really quick. I wanted to get it out kind of quick so I can answer questions and see exactly what you guys are interested in and, and how we can as a company help you. Um, we do give, um, let me see if I can find it here. Um, this link to everyone that talks about our programs. And we also, Christina, could you pull up the STEM instructor link? And maybe we'll put that in the chat too and open that, um, that we send out to schools, um, talking about our programs. So we're, we're very organized about anyone that wants to come on board uh, with us and be an intern um, and learn about um, coding and robotics and how to teach it. Um, as well as our crazy computer build where we are um, aligning with, um, in fact, I think I'll open that one up. We have a program in our schools right now where we're teaching computer builds and we give this box to the kids on the very first day. We've been doing this virtually too. We're teaching how to build a computer virtually, which has been a kick. Um, but the kids get this box to take it home and they take it apart and then they complete about 30 sessions of classwork, including networking and all the parts and all the things that they do and as well as uh, being safe online and Linux, we put Linux on them. And at the end of the course, the, the kids receive this entire computer system and they keep it forever. Um, so it's a very, very cool course that we're offering in schools. We also do community events with this. So lots and sky's the limit with us when it comes to technology and how we can help your students in your schools from K through 12, as well as how we can help interns that would like to come to our company. Questions, thoughts, that was a lot, sorry. I get a little carried away sometimes. So I think I will stop sharing my screen for a moment and ask you guys um, how we can help you with the things that you're doing. Oh, just a quick question. Um, this is only available for students in Phoenix, like to come to the shop and get the program, or do you guys have like summer programs where kids from Tucson can come? Absolutely. The answer to your question is yes, you can. I'm going to stop sharing this so that we can all talk. Um, absolutely. So we've done um, virtual classes for like everyone else the past year kind of thing. Um, could we offer an internship? I was actually kind of ready for this question. Um, via uh, a virtual environment, you bet. If you had a student that wanted to come up and hang out with us um, over the summer, could we work something out there? You bet. Is that somewhat of an answer? Is that good? Yes, and then is it a competitive process to get to the internship? And two, and then that's a two questions. One, do the students have to pay? And two, do they get paid? Okay, to the first question, does anyone have to pay? Absolutely not. Okay, we are a teaching environment. And the very, what we do ask all of our um, interns when they come on board with us, to give us four to six hours for training. So they come, they learn about the robot. And I'll tell you, it's a blast, to be honest with you. You know, you almost, they almost say, do I have to pay something? Yeah, no. It's, uh, they, they come in, they literally play with robots. We, we encourage them, here's all of our robots. You know, we, we use some sophisticated parallax uh, with micro bits on them, some other um, robots with Raspberry Pis. We're teaching the Linux environment as well as Mac, PC, and Chrome OS. Um, 
and and I, I I've always embraced that as a teacher anyway. You know, you have Mac schools and uh, Windows schools, you know, Microsoft schools, and kids that go to those schools. Let's hope they get a job in those those environments because they're a little deficient on the others. So. Uh, I've always thought that you should teach all the systems that are out there to your students when you're in high school. Um, you should give them a well-rounded piece of technology, not just business systems, but what's going on with artificial intelligence, that's the future, what in Bitcoin, you know, um, all kinds of, of think quantum, all of this is, 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 is coming into our, the next decade of, of technology. So we want our interns to just sponge up everything that we have in our company. We want them to come in there and take it all from everybody. Sometimes they hang out all day, you know, our fridge is always stocked, you know, and figure that, you know, if you're gonna feed everybody, they're all gonna be happy and they're gonna learn. So we have a ton of food in our refrigerator all the time and cookies, you will never be wanting a cookie in our store. Um, so they come, they learn, they play, and uh, they get all jazzed about it. And then that transfers to the kids that they're teaching. So, and, and that's what we want. You know, we, we're, we're focusing on teaching a, we have a lot of focuses actually, but one of them is teaching kids in schools, real coding and robotics. So we want our interns to learn it. When they got it, we're gonna pay them right away. We start at $15 an hour. Uh, some of our guys are making 20 an hour uh, working while they're going to school, as opposed to fast food or retail, they're teaching coding and robotics in a, while they're learning uh, engineering or computer science or um, you know a lot of technical fields that are out there. So most of our guys now are college technology students and they're working as coding and robotics instructors while they're going to college. So it supplements their learning and looks awesome on their resume, as well as the, um, personal skills in the store. They'll come and work in the store and do customer service with a lot of our clients. Good stuff. So yes, um, whole company is a, uh, a greater than the sum of its parts, I would say. <laughs> what other questions do you have? Debbie, I have a question for you. Um, you know, you told us a little bit about your background, obviously, as an educator, which is kind of the root of everything here, right? Sure. And, and the way that looks. Um, what would you share in regard to um, your experience of getting to where you are now with that? I mean, I think you've told a little bit about the connection with the students, right? The passion that's behind that and your, the business thing that you launched. But how would you tell or share with these educators about mentors or, or what may have been some folks that got you mm -hmm. to where you are now at this stage? Yes, that's a really cool question as an educator because I taught a lot of professional development in technology too uh, when I worked in PV schools. Um, and it, it really started with, and I mean this sincerely with the kids, you know, I would go to a conference or something and I'd show an MIT movie and, you know, I started to teach online in a way, I put my entire class on a Google website. So with the calendar and all that, so the kids could see their lessons there, but yet we were very active in the classroom. The assignments were there, there was never handouts, the movies were there, all of that. So if I went to a conference or something like that, um, I would give the kids some really engaging stuff, have them answer questions on a Google form. And sometimes when I was at the conference at lunch, I'd see the kids answers coming in and I would be texting them back and forth. Now, this is 20 years ago. So I'm gonna tell you, I may have gotten in trouble a few times for texting my kids while I was at a conference, but we may not go into that too deep, but nonetheless, I was always asking for feedback from my students. Um, and if I take away anything as an educator, uh, or if I stepped into the classroom again, I think that it's a two-way thing. I think that a lot of teachers go in and they feel they should teach and they should be the smartest person in the room. I never thought I was the smartest person in the room. I just liked doing this and I wanted to hang out with these kids and I love technology and we're all in this together. So let's, let's learn stuff and let's do stuff. Um, and the case in point is the solar car. We went to a conference. I took kids to the Tucson conference. I think a lot of you guys do that, the, 
uh, CTE, ACC, CTE conference. I took them there and they presented actually there and they saw this solar car and they said, Miss K, Miss K, can we do this solar car? And I'm like, oh my God, I knew nothing about this. And so I found some money. We got the solar car. We put it in the room. I said, okay, guys, you wanted to do this. Let's do this. So my kids were telling me things like, Miss K, we need a gear with a ratio of 12 to one and it has to have 14 spokes on it. Can you and your husband go and find one over the weekend so that we, we need it for Monday or Saturday? So that's the kind of teacher I was. I didn't say, okay, now we're gonna learn about gear ratios because to this day, I still can't tell you what they are. But doggone it if those kids didn't build a solar powered car that went 17 miles an hour. So, and then when you do that, okay, when you go find a little bit of money and then the kids do this fabulous thing and you bring people in and you show them, hey, look what my kids are doing. Um, they're so awesome. And then the kids talk all about it the funny thing starts happening. You start getting more money. You know, people start saying, oh, well, that's a cool project. And then you go pitch something else to the, the board, the school board or a principal or a superintendent that, you know, if you make your school district look good, when you start asking for stuff, they say, oh, give it to Debbie because she's got those kids that are going to do that stuff. And it starts to snowball. It really does. Um, that would be my advice as a teacher to give it to the kids. They, they love this stuff. They eat it up. If they're in your classroom um, and you ask them what they think, they're like, whoa, you're asking me? That's what I did. Whoever, um, I think it is, um, Kara. Looks like you were saying something, Kara, turn your mic on. <laughs> Yeah, maybe not. Anyone else have any thoughts on that? I don't know. I want this to be a group thing for all of us. It's not just about me because I think you're doing wonderful things out there, all of you. If you're you're sitting here, I think you're doing great things too. Um, you know, that's actually- Sarah, if, you, if you can't unmute, maybe you just want to type it into the chat. Yeah. We'll look for it. Oh, thanks, Kara. Maybe I can, do we have any power here whatsoever? Um, while while that they're uh, typing there, Debbie, uh, one thing that I think ties in with what you just said there, how how, is it, how, how can instructors learn to to advocate? Right? Um, you obviously talked a, bit, a little bit about how you were advocating for yourself in the sense that you you picked up some unusual projects, right? Based off of the recommendation of your students, and then the success fed into the next level of success. So, th so think about if um, what might be your thoughts or recommendations of, of these these educators on how do they advocate, you know, for themselves and for their students in taking risks? Because let's think about it, right? I that's think so your solar important. car was a risk, <laughs> right? Yeah, that's so important, you know. And man, I could speak to that too. Uh, just doing professional development and teaching, you know, my school district would come to me and say, Debbie, you know, teach the teachers how to do websites. Or when the Chromebooks first came on board, what, 20 years ago, we beta tested them with Google. And, um, and then, you know, it was a big learning curve for teachers. So I took my students with me to teach, you know, I, they go around the room and some of my classes got really big and the kids would go around. I may have gotten in trouble putting out a tip jar for that, but um, the, <laughs> The big piece there is, uh, yeah, I know. Um, but I would take my students there and, you know, it, it gave the kids so much um, integrity and self-esteem to be able to show teachers how to do something. And so that was a great thing. But in those, those classes, to answer your question, um, taking risks is huge. And I think educators especially educators especially are very fearful that oh my gosh if i did that i'm gonna lose my job or something or you know how did you get that technology why can't i get that technology and so i would say to them a lot of times you know just use it you know if you can show that you're going to be a teacher that is going to um do cool things in google you know or um you know, use this app or, you know, this, if you're teaching math, here's some cool, cool things to, to present to your kids and you need Chromebook cards, you know, when it wasn't one-to-one -one and stuff like that. If you can 
go to your administrator and say, hey, I want to do this because it's something amazing for the kids. I mean, that's why you're there anyway. You're not making 12 cents an hour because you don't love those kids. If you can show that you want to do something amazing for the kids, uh, there's, there's no greater verifiable risk than that. Verifiable risk. So if you need something to, to rely on, I love it's the kids. Yeah, it's the kids. I mean, that's what you're there for. So, um, you know, I don't, I don't think that's exploiting anything. It's, it's genuinely, you're not being disingenuous by saying you want to do this thing because my kids are going to learn this stuff. Mm -hmm. Can I piggyback sure. on that, Debbie? Sure. I am amazed. Now, I know nothing, or let me say, I know how to turn on a computer and I'm yeah. learning. I mean, you know, I mean. Thank uh, goodness we started a business for people like you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I'm getting better every day, but um, so I can't connect to the specifics of your profession, but I certainly can um, look at the um, the characteristics that we share. I totally agree with you. If you let the kids do things or you trust that they know how to do it, you don't have to be the expert. I've learned that in the last 10 years of teaching mm -hmm. that I uh, learned just as much from them as they would ever do. I, I can guide them, I can support them. I can you know um, get the, the challenges or the roadblocks out of the way because I can work with administration, et cetera. But I can't stress that enough. And that's where the partnership and the excitement comes from when you see kids actually take over and do something like that. So mm -hmm. I can't speak enough to that mm -hmm. and to network and to go out and see. So what you've given me today is yes, belief in what I've been doing but also a pathway. So if a student is really interested in the field, I know where to go or a contact. And to me, that is very, very important in this. Yes, I, I hope, and that's great because I hope you guys take away from this meeting today that while I told you about GenTech and it's this company that this goofy teacher started with a bunch of kids and um, we do tech stuff, uh, we have a lot of, um, places to refer you to, okay? We meet a lot of people that come through our doors. And if it's not us, there's other people that we would in a heartbeat um, connect you to. We, we've made a lot of connections that way. So never ever have, I, I would really love if everybody would put their information in the chat. I see some of you are doing that, which is awesome. Um, if we could do that and we'll, we'll save the chat and you know I'll send you Christina, maybe we'll send you a uh, follow up. Hello, and me too, uh, to say that, you know, we're here. We, we started a tech hub for a reason. We're here to, to help educators like us. And, and we want to make this connection with the business community. You know, we, we're we focusing on a lot of low socioeconomic school districts. We're, we're in schools where kids have never played with a robot or even heard the word coding. And we feel that you know technology success or career success shouldn't be based on the zip code you went to school in. And um, we want to change that in a big way by bringing the technology to kids that uh, haven't had the chance to do it before. Um, and, and in turn, using interns to bring that to the classroom. You know, we, we're, what we're doing is we're, we're bringing techs as teach, we're making text teachers instead of trying to consistently make teachers text because technology changes all the time. And so unless you're going to keep up with it, um, you're gonna be falling behind all the time. And, and we don't want those kinds of struggles for teachers either, they're busy enough, right, Kathleen? Oh, <laughs> Debbie, I was gonna ask a question, but sure. uh, I'll, I'll share my personal, I, I'm sitting in my, uh, my office and my granddaughter and daughter were outside and I was waving to them. But if, if oh. there isn't another question, I do have one. Good. I thought you were raising your hand. And I, well, I, yeah, I sorry, tend to I get too I excited. As soon so. as I, yep. As soon <laughs> as I waved hi to them, I realized I was in the screen. You know what? You, you talked before about the fact that all of your students really understand bits about running the business. And we know that, you know, in addition to having um, technical skills or the skills required for a certain industry. We know that um, 
um, companies often talk about the fact that many times the, the, the students, whether they're high school students, college students, don't really know much about running a business. So if you had to riff for a minute or two about how um, the teachers that are and, and counselors even that are on the call with us today could help bring what running a business is like to life, especially since perhaps many of them have not run a business the way you have, I'd be interested in, in what you would have to share. Well, first of all, anyone's welcome to come and spend the day with us, with their students. You know, there's that's number one. Okay, so if you want to do that, or if you want to have a Zoom call like this, and we'll bring our, our staff into your classroom with you, that's another option that you could do. Um, but just the day-to-day -day stuff of business is not going and buying a business book and saying, read page 426, okay? It's listening to business people. And, and I think that, you know, someone like maybe um, Paul with, with, um, or Andrew with business, Ed, I think it would be uh, good to have some companies share experiences. Um, I shared with you, I kind of, I don't actually know why I did it today like that, but um, just off the cuff, the, the beginnings of our business and how we failed in the beginning. And, uh, boy, you know, I was, there was a moment where I was giving, hey, Andrew, you seem, you want that TV? And Dalton, do you want that TV? I'll take the plants and, you know, we'll call it a day and say, we learned something here and that's it. And then truthfully, I had the community, some of our clients in the community came to me and then I got this loan by DreamSpring. I can't say enough about DreamSpring as a company um, that said, you know, don't quit, move your store and here's some money to, to keep going. So, I mean, sometimes things come out of the blue and they compel you to keep your business going. So, um, but that's all part of business. Um, they, don't, they don't tell you that in business class um, at college or anywhere. I mean, not that I went to, to the business class. I don't know, some of you are business people. Um, it's, it's really don't give up and figure out the next best idea. You know, what, what's happening? I mean, all of us in this room right now readjusted with COVID, we all did, you know, and we're still sitting here to talk about it. Um, who are the people that are not on this call that are not talking to anybody anymore that are now, you know, doing DoorDash or whatever because they, they said, I can't do this, you know? We said, oh my gosh, what are we gonna do? You know, we looked good last February and I was buying a new car last February and then all of a sudden March 19th I'm sitting in my store in the dark going I'm closing my store today what's that about you know. Um, so we all went through those kinds of things, so then you go home at the end of the day and you have a beer or you cry or what you do whatever it, to get over it and then you think all right, this is a new thing now, how am I going to fix this and that's what running a business is that's business 101. It's what am I gonna do now? I think that's what I would tell every, and, and if you have students in your classroom, um, I'd give them a challenge of some sort, you know, and, and say, well, what, what are you gonna do when a pandemic, now we have got a pandemic, we could even call it as an exercise, what would you do? <laughs> Debbie, it looks like you have a question. Any chance that you're thinking about opening a branch in Tucson? We would love to. <laughs> We're still trying to figure out how to make our first one uh, work. Um, the schools are, are good for us. Um, the store, you know, the, the return on investment, we're, we're, we are, we're more than breaking even, but not enough. Let's put it that way uh, for the store. Um, You've been open how long now? Um, well, two years in one location, then we moved, and the second location has been a lot more successful for us. In fact, we just made a, um, I'm in a um, letter of intent for more space in the center that we're at. So, because we'd like to teach cybersecurity um, with real world simulations and set up a lab for it. Um, let me ask you guys, um, what do you think that, uh, have you thought of cybersecurity to teach it in your schools? I mean, I think Pima College probably has something like that going on, but our college folks, but um, at the high school or elementary school level to do simulations and that sort of thing. 
Um, we think that it might be cool to set up a lab for kids to come to because a lot of school districts would struggle with uh, setting up secure servers and that sort of thing. So we, we thought it would be fun to set up a lab and let the kids, I don't wanna say the words warfare range, but do a lab where they're doing simulations at a much more secure level um, and play and uh, understand what how serious and the integrity of um, data on the internet is. And that's, I think that's a, be a great thing to do. So we, we'd like to, to do that. Refurbishing computers is another thing that we'd like to expand upon. So to answer your question, we'd like to, we're trying to figure out how to put more stores in the Phoenix area. Um, probably maybe three stores in the Phoenix area, then we'd love to, we'd actually love to branch out to all of Arizona and reach, you know, some of the, like the Indian, uh, the res um, kids and teach them how to build computers and leave some computers there, all of that great stuff. We, we've got lots of aspirations for that. So that was a great question. Um, do you have an investor in your pocket? I don't know, we haven't done investors yet, but we're thinking that might be a direction to look at. Yeah. Yeah. What else? You know, Debbie, I, uh, the I, Casa Grande uh, um, was it down by Jimmy Care? You know that empty old mall that used to exist. <laughs> uh, there's plenty of space there, and I every time I drive to Phoenix, I always think, why doesn't the community college take that over and yeah. just really hit CTE hard in that entire mall? Because you got the restaurant that used to exist there, so there's your culinary class that's already prepped for it, and then you got all that business, and you got the little bell tower. You know, there's your administrative office, and then everything else has that classroom. You know, and Costa yeah. Grande is cheaper than Phoenix. You know, <laughs> a little stepping stone on the way to Tucson. <laughs> right. So maybe there's a college there. We could put a little, little store in the corner. Is that your thought there? Great ideas are great. Implementing them is the tough part. <laughs> right. You know, get, putting the meat and potatoes to that. You know, that sort of thing. So, um, Andrew, I have a question for you as far as business development is concerned. Um, I, one of the, the things that I'm thinking about is that there's a lot of businesses out there that I believe would love to support kids in this endeavor. Um, there's some kids that, you know, come to our store that want to go to college a little bit, or they just end up working at our store. I, I've been looking for kind of creating a relationship with, we've done it a little bit with Boeing, and of course, Cisco has been great to our company, but um, other companies out there that would like to think about an intern or something like that, that might want to support them coming through our company first. I don't know. Do you have any thoughts on that? Well, um, just recently, I, I actually had a conversation with Kathleen. Uh, she has quite a network in the Phoenix area, but uh, Aaron Ball uh, from the Center for the Future of Arizona and I just met with uh, our Chamber of Commerce down here in Tucson, and we are uh, putting together a roundtable of um, cybersecurity professionals from uh, across sectors. So, um, you know, the Tucson Medical Center, it's a hospital. Uh, mm -hmm. They've got someone uh, and that's all coming together now. So I don't have that many specific businesses that are gonna, I, I can't name that many businesses, but um, maybe working through the chamber to develop something like that. And then uh, using your store as sort of the launching pad uh, for those interns, that I think that could work really well. Also, if, before I mute my mic again, um, I I really think that this is a great idea. I love your model, and I really think that it could thrive here in Tucson. Um, so I'd like to have a little further conversation about that. I think there's probably this is probably a market that's ready for something like this if you can get it funded. Mm -hmm not that difficult to open a store. It's not. I mean, uh, if you remember me saying that I was about ready to bail and then I turned around and I opened another store. Um, if you can do that, I, I see how to do that. Um, uh, it's not that difficult to open a store um, and to get going on it, that sort of thing. Um, when I was a teacher, I made 21 feel an average you know, I, I needed my own van. I made a, an average of 21 field trips a year as a teacher. And um, so, yeah, that's a lot. Um, so I went to Tucson a lot, mostly, you know, racing the car, the solar car, and then the conferences down there and all of that stuff. And so um, when you said Tucson opening a store, it, 
happened a little earlier. I was thinking, oh my gosh, here I go again. We're going to be having road trips down to the, we know where all the in and out burger places were. Um, uh, road trips down to Tucson. I, I think that would be a blast actually to do that. I do. I didn't think of that being our second store, but I would love to have a lot of stores. It's good for the, it's good for the kids that work there. It's good for the people that we serve. It's good for the little kids that we, we teach. The whole idea has got lots of perks to it all the way around. So yeah, I'd love to have a lot of stores. Thanks. We may talk about that someday. Be careful what you wish for. Yeah, well, I think it would really it would really be a, a great benefit. Uh, you know, um, Sally Miller, who's on the call with us today, she and I place juniors and seniors and uh, mm -hmm. I think it would probably be tough to place our juniors and seniors through you virtually, but if there was a store down here, I feel like many of them, it would just be such a good fit. So I don't know, keep it in mind. Maybe, maybe it'll, maybe it'll come around. Let's talk about this. Okay. okay. I'm serious. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I don't know. How can I help everybody here? We've got about a few more minutes, right? Um, We go until five o'clock. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Big five kind of thing. I mean, I, I'm. It's it's a crazy idea, but it's it's definitely doable. And, it, and even if some of you wanted to be involved in in doing this, either on your campus or um, near your campus, um, I certainly would welcome that opportunity as well. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I mean, and, and those of you that are from colleges. Uh, we have set up a direct line with Phoenix College, GCU, ASU, and um, UAT for their tech students to come and interview with us. Oh, did we put that um, STEM folder in here, Christina, somewhere? Christina, are you with us still? Christina went to get a sandwich. No, Christina's here, but she... Uh... I'm getting the link to the STEM thing, but I just wanted to let everybody who's left information know, like I'll be following up with you and sending you an email directly as well. That'll also have that information. So I've just been trying to keep up with everybody on the chat because y'all are quick on the take. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Thank you, everybody. Um, yeah, we I got the five minute presentation has been amazing, but we've got five minutes. So I'm throwing it open to you guys. Questions and I'll try to do brief answers. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll say something just to tag on with Andrew. Um, mm -hmm. I do feel like school districts in Tucson would very much support this. And that's really the way to segue, maybe, maybe mm -hmm. segue into the Tucson market um, because the districts make the, I did this with another program, but they weren't willing to make the commitment to meet with the district and get everything kind of cleared through them so we could have the programming on our computers. Um, but if, if, if your company can do that and, you know, meet with the district IT and present the program mm -hmm. so that then the classes or an aspect of this class could be part of our tech program or even an event, I think mm -hmm. it would take off like wildfire. Oh, that's sweet. You mentioned the district thing. Uh, I just want to say that since leaving a school district and going out on my own, I don't have to do any more permission slips. Right. <laughs> so it's a big perk. <laughs> so it's kind of cool to do what you want to do with the kids. Well, <laughs> of course, within reason, but yeah. But yeah. yeah. I don't think it would be permission slips. It's just the technology, um, like sure. what we can use on our programs has to be right. approved through right. the district and then we can use it or we can work with you virtually. Sure, sure. So yeah, let's definitely keep in touch individually with the ideas that you have. We're game. Uh, we're pretty gutsy around here. We'd, we'd love to, yeah. Someone put in here, J. Ted. Um, yeah, um, I've talked to Tom Tyree quite a bit and some of the J. Ted people and CTE people about uh, the cool things that we could do is really, really cool. Um, you know, it, it's just next steps. It's always getting to those next steps. Um, and so I'm definitely telling you I'm game if you are. <laughs> yes. Melanie, is there anything that you want to say to close out the meeting or any of that stuff? 
Uh, thanks, Debbie. Um, if no one has any other questions, we still have about four minutes. Um, so if uh, you want to keep putting things in the chat, it sounds like pretty much everyone in this in this call wants to continue this conversation. <laughs> experience. So this was a great introduction to the great work you're doing, Debbie. So I just want to say thank you. Um, and Paul, jump in too. Just thank you so much for sharing all this information with the team. So uh -huh. yeah. Yes, on behalf of the, the, the Greater Phoenix Chamber Foundation and our Elevate Ed team, uh, this has just been so uh, powerful to get to hear the success of what you've had with your, your store. And the scary parts of it, right? The, the parts that we're not not for sure, but to see to see where your successes are is great, and and also I think inspiring, particularly with the focus being on the students, and and that's what all these folks. That's why they're in education. There's the, there's that special place that's there when you're working, you know, one on one with students and watching and seeing them grow and develop. So thank you, Debbie. Thank you. It's it's a wonderful opportunity to have interns come to our store and say, you know what? Yeah, I wanna teach. I wanna teach elementary kids coding and robotics and how to build a computer. And, um, and to see these interns teach kids, it's kind of like if you're a parent and suddenly you're a grandparent, it's like now you're seeing your kid's parent. It's, it's as enchanting as that, to be honest with you. So, you know, I started the company as a mission to champion the tech students and give them a career possibility. One of my students said to me once, Miss Kay, some teachers buy their kids pizzas. You bought us a store. <laughs> and, and, and that's kind of cool um, because it is, it's their store to grow, grow the business and then be able to teach a younger generation um, things that are very important to their future. So thank you for the opportunity for us to share this with you. We have all kinds of opportunities for your schools to teach coding and robotics in it and computer builds. And we have opportunities for your interns and your college students. And we have opportunities for business as well to join us in um, championing uh, STEM in, in Arizona and elevate it. So thanks. And I just want to give one last shout out to all the educators on this call. Um, I want to thank you for sharing your time this afternoon with all the uh, pulls on your time. Um, I want to thank you for investing in you. And through that investment in yourselves, you're investing in all the students that we support. So thank you so much, everybody. Um, one minute left, but I think we're ending the day on a high note and uh, mm -hmm. motivated to keep mm -hmm. innovating and trying new things, guys. <laughs> thank you so, so much for the opportunity and best wishes to all of you. Have a good evening, everybody. Thank you, Thanks, everyone. I'm saving the chat. <laughs> are we through for the day? Because I think there aren't we going till 530 or what do we do next?